it's time. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Gear Corner here at the card table, our mini series where we talk about everything and anything Gear Chronicle. Now, today, Astro Force is finally, finally out. So, I thought, what better way than wrap up that card reveal um, breakdown than to actually do an actual card set breakdown? I have here with me today my local clan set provided to me by Monster Gaming, um, a local game store. Links down below where you can get your own clan sets. I also got a couple of other things from them, like an Angel Feather set. So, com you'll be like, comment down below if you guys want to see another breakdown of that. But. Of course, Gear Chronicle is the main thing here, so let's talk about Gear Chronicle. So, grab yourself a beverage. Some drugs. I don't freaking know. Just whatever. I'm. It's probably gonna be a long video. Here we go. All right. So to get started, let's start off with the new starting Vanguard, which is a palette swap starter, but it's the first second starter they got. It's it's cool. Corner Fang School will have the right one in a couple months. Maybe this quarantine is over. But in addition to that, we also got a brand new critical trigger who is super awesome art. I love this thing. We just claim key, Draco Kid, and I love his flavor text. It's alright, let's head towards the future where bullets hit. These got guns. And of course, we got reprints of three older triggers. Our heel drawing critical trigger. In the future, we should be getting another heal and another draw, but we'll go into that in another video, because that's Sarduck. Uh, important part, of course, here is our new third critical trigger, so we have the option to run 12 crits if we want, and or just splash your arts around. I'm just going to use these two. Like, Phone Boy's cool, but these, these are just... Mm. Like them from the beginning. Awesome Drago. But anyways, going back to our starter Crito Kitty. Crito Tiger. Of course, we went over in the last video, uh, one of the last videos or something. Uh, we have our Chrono Fang line. I uh, went over them previously, so I'll just go over them real quick and kind of um, what I think they do now. Starter, same as always, yay. Uh, grade 1, this is honestly one of the, the better cards in the sets. Um, his ability on Vanguard, I begin your turn, you could draw a card, which gives you an extra draw per turn, which is awesome. And then we discard him. You could kind of blast, call him at rest. That's great. You refund your cost of this card immediately. Plus, you get to draw cards, so it's a plus one. Uh, with Gear Chronicles kind of focusing on this card mechanic, I think he's definitely going to see some play in the future. I'll show you on a, another video, another build. That's what he can do even with Next Age. Just in that, we got Quarterback Tiger. SP. I need more SPs. These are like the only ones I was able to get. Um, yeah, so uh, same thing as him kind of getting trying to get an extra draw, but he makes you discard as well. Discard is good for that. And a couple other things. And another discard effect, when he attacks on rear guard, you can discard to give him a crit. Not as important, but I guess the extra crit pressure for free is kind of nice. For free discard a card. Um, I don't see him being as important as Tiger in the future, but I suppose you can splash him for your, if you're running a heavy discard engine and just have that critical pressure. Plus the draw is nice, like you effectively draw two cards every turn when you add this, this, this in a row. Good burst draw. Corona Fang Tiger. Um, he's a stride copy. He's a slightly better Lost Legend, so that's uh, literally works with this card. That's all I gotta say about him. He's cool. He has a nice alright effect to give your boy a crit and a drive check, but he's just a clone of Lost Legend. You could honestly run either. This card's important though. Oh. Uh, brief reminder of what you, he does when you attack. You could. Gain effects based on how many cards are in your hand, or how few are in your hand, because the whole tiger mechanic is you want to have less cards. Note all the discarding these boys do. So, um, at five or less, you can retire to front row, which is nice, but at the same time, it's kind of turned your chronicle from a spin cards back to deck to just retire cards straight. 
kind of gets rid of their retire gimmick, but whatever. Um, three or less front room is plus 10, very similar to Mystery Flare. And one or less face down all your damage, and it gives some nice shield break where your opponent's guards all five or less. So, um, this I think, and the Grade 1 are probably going to be staying in builds. I already have them in my next bit age build as a 2 of here. But, um, very, very, very good card. The fact that this is on attack, unlike any of the previous drives where it checks your, your timing. Um, this means you reward aggression, you're able to field cards and just go nuts every turn, or you can just guard everything and say, oh, hey, now I get to restrict you while I attack. Like, it's a very, very useful card to just kind of sit on if you're forced to hard ride a grade four. And 15k base is kind of nice for that as well, especially going against actual numbers that usually swing in, like, the 14s when boosted. So, super awesome cards, but you already know about them. Let's move on to some stuff I have shut off. All right, starting with the doubles. Um, Reinvigorate Wing Dragon. He has an effect where once per turn, you can still blast one, bind two of your rear guards. This does include him if he is on rear. And when you do that, you can check your top three, draw, call two of them, and bind the other. Now this is made from Mystery Flare. Um... I don't know how the tech's going to work on him. I think it's going to be like a 2 of or something like that. But effectively, this replaces your old 4... Um, why can't that... Or Valkyrion. Why do I not know his name for a second? Um, he effectively replaces Valkyrion because you're instantly... If you bind him, that's 3 of the 5. And then if you had like another 2, say this example, boom, there's your Valkyrion that you had before your know, grade 5 and binds him. So this is great early aggression... Helps you set your mystery flare, helps you get those bind numbers. And on top of that, you also get another bind. So you could, like, even if you hit him, then, like, just pulling this, for example, because it's a stride, um, pull him and him, boom, there's an instant seven in your bind zone. All of a sudden, mystery flare has the ability to have triple drive and a crit. So, very good combo card. I've seen some people attack him on some online matches I watch, but I just don't know where this place for him in the deck yet. I'm sure in the future, we'll be able to build, make a build exclusively around him. And the more important card, also known as the melee mode standard, I'm calling it right now. This boy, Steam, his name is Steam Scarab Bear Cub, but his real name is Steam Scarab $25 Double Rare. And falling. Oh, this boy is good. Alright, so, two effects. First, let's go over the second one because it's kind of basic. You can discard him as a grade 3. Works just like Stride Fodder. And a couple of cards that we're getting in the future, I'll talk about in a different video. Um, neat. Grade 2 Stride Fodder. Always to go into your grade 4 instantly. Awesome. What's important though is his first skill. Then go to rear guard, once per turn, kind of plus one, discard a card from your hand. Remember the discarding? Um, yeah, so when you do that, your Vanguard gets a drive check. It's a very good effect. Uh, you Shadow players might know Blast Dark had a similar skill, where he gained an extra drive for a uh, discard if your opponent had no field. This is slightly better because it doesn't have a restriction. His restriction is effectively a counter blasting discard, and you immediately get a discard refunded by getting a drive check. So if you think about it that way, it's a filter, but um, add that on to your grade fours that often have a triple drive, add that on to, say, like, it's a tiger, there's tiger. On Tiger's discard skill, an extra drive once again trades off, but you're effectively getting a crap load of drive checks on your Vanguard swing. This is made even better the fact that he's a grade two and he can do it on himself. So if you get rushed early on, uh, field a couple of these dudes, all of a sudden you got a Vanguard, a uh, grade two Vanguard swing with like three, four drive checks for no reason. Very expensive skill because you're creating kind of blast and uh, discard for a drive, but he could. Very good. Probably like one of the best cards in the set. I'd say without looking at skills blindly, best card, second best card, third best card. Boom, ignore the rest of this video, follow the rest of this video. If you're enjoying this video, like, comment, subscribe. I have to say that every five seconds. Anyways, moving on from the shiny cards, let's take a look at the rares. And I'll take a sip of water. Stay hydrated, kids. 
So, starting with our other grade four of the sets. Um, Novel Around Dragon, not the biggest fan of, but um, basically when placed, count boss one, discard two, check your top three, and call them all. This is, let's, let's just say this would be okay as a first stride if you didn't have other options like your boy and Mystery Flare and seem to be next age. Um, kind of plus one, discard two, call three. You effectively plus one because you're calling three cards at the cost of discarding two. But this is also a blind call and it's mandatory. So if you hit triggers, sucks to be you, you gotta call them. It's a very cool Paladin E skill, very nice to set board early game. And you are running force markers, so even if you hit triggers, it can still be like a 15k trigger or whatever. But I just, uh, I don't like him that much. I mean, I guess if you were running budget deck, you could have him in there. But outside of that, I struggle to figure out his use. Cool art there. It looks really cool. Like these double chainsaw thingies. And little um, anime tidbit. He and Mr. Dragon Boy actually showed up in the anime before they were spoiled. As like big silhouettes fighting, so that was kind of cool. Next up, we have Steam Link's Gundra. Gundaya. Gudea. That's a weird name. This is, I guess, the Chrono Fang support grade 3, even though this is a stride deck, so you're not going to have many support grade 3s in there. Um, so, skill, discard a card, choose a rear guard, retire it, and he gets plus 5. Nice. He helps out with your retire engine. Uh, I guess, like, because Fang usually retires the, the front 2, unless you're going up against an Axel deck, which might have extra circles, you'd use him to snipe a back row card. Again, it's not a bad skill, and he does have a force marker if you have to ride him, but uh, there's just not room for random grade threes unless they do anything in Gear Chronicle. Oh, I'm so excited about her. So, Steam Maiden Ishve. Ignoring her effect. Look at this name. You guys that were OG members of the G series might remember that Gear Chronicle had uh, kind of a archetype name of Steam Maidens. All Steam waifus like Uluru, Arlem, Melee, and all that fun stuff. So this, fun fact, is Standard's very first Steam Maiden. Thumbs up for that. Super cute waifu with tiny head. Anyways, her actual effects. Um, after she attacks, if you have, I think, three or less in hand? Yeah, three or less cards in hand. Camp boss one, retire her, draw two. <clears throat> this is... Theoretically nice for Corona Fang because his whole deal is having very few cards, kind of like the old Brave. But um, theoretically, you should be over three by the time you attack with your Vanguard. Uh, you should be getting multiple drive checks, usually three off that alone. Um, things like Ilkabu and Corona Fang himself give you extra drive checks, so you should be hitting like four to five checks a turn if you do it right. So, like, while it's nice in theory, I guess you could tech it in some other decks and just go hug wild. Um, also, I guess early game, if you want to be really aggressive in there, you could tech it, but I just am not sure if she's going to be viably playable. Grant, I'll still tech her in. Like, I'm going to test everything, but first impressions are first way too awesome. Not a fan of the timing. What is Lady Bay, though? is this boy. Let me go ahead and get his other support cards out so we can talk about them all at the same time. So this trio, they've got a cool little gimmick where they're treated as grade fours. And in addition to that, they have skills based on how many grade fours you have on, four, on field. So <clears throat> real quick, I went over their first skill. All of them are basically treated as a grade four or they match your banger's current grade, whatever. So the important one, when he attacks, counter blast four, draw a card. That sucks, but it sucks less when you keep on reading and says that this cost of juice by one counter blast for each of your grade four units. He's gonna be one. 
your Vanguard is going to be one. Right there, that automatically reduces to two. And like I said, these two boys also do the same thing. So if you're going to be making a field revolving around them, he effectively is a free draw on attack. Super cool. So for the other ones, we got this one who is, when you hit, you just can soul blast one and retire a card. Very good. Um, it's nice because it says not when he when he's boosting, but just any grade four. So once again, your field being all grade fours, if any attack hits, you can use the effect. Very good. Like I said, it'll mostly be sniping back row or axle circles with it, but not that bad. <clears throat> Final one has basic skill where he just gets plus five. That's it. Um, plus five numbers, typically 18, 23. On an actual grade four, that's 15K. That'll make a, let's see, 23, 28. You make numbers sometimes, but he's the common for, of the three for a reason. Not bad. These two are better. That's all I can say about it. Uh, so if you want to make a cool grade four deck, go for it. Based around these three guys, be some I experiment with maybe as a budget deck. I'm not sure if it's made exclusively for Fing yet. Moving on, we got a super cute new perfect guard. This is just like the new on ride draw one discard one. Help you filter. Another great on ride target if you want to go 16 crit in Fing. 12 crit, my bad. <coughs> but aside from that, we're probably going to be using the draw PG. Too bad though, like, I love her. She's this freaking adorable little steam main. Steam janitor. Why does she have to be a janitor? She's freaking cute. Like, big Ben looking clock back there. Love the steampunk aesthetic. Moving on to the final cards are the commons. Now, I'll show you this set with a sip of water. So, <clears throat> remember before when I was talking about how there's no room for support grade threes in Gear Chronicle? This is the exception. When placed, bind a card in your hand. Until the end of your turn, when your opponent may call a card from the hand to guard circle, he or she must call two instead. You guys remember Valdor? He Valdors the entire field. This is super good as common. Um, not as good, theoretically, as something like Spain Valiant where it does a three block, or was it, I'm trying to remember the Mermaid that does not Pacifica. The Penguin one. Penguin Girl. Anyways, um, so. On statement, he's not the best. He doesn't even have a gift, unfortunately. Which is fine because he's a regard only effect. But here's the cool thing. You guys remember how Gear Chronicle had this little thing in premium called Time Leap? Where you attack with a dude and it's like, boom, see you later, and you call another dude? This will stack on that. In the middle of a time leap turn, he can just keep on making two block on every single attack you have that turn. Super good, Mr. Magician Man. Magician Man, what's his name? Bellow Amusements Colossus. Hmm. You have to get used to that. I've been calling him singing and dancing this whole time. But Melody, that's kind of cool. Yeah, he is really good. Um, Sander maybe won't have as much time to shine as in Premium, but he was basically made to make time leap aggressive. And in addition to that, going off of your fang turn where they're already discarding, um, getting minus five on all their shields, he's also saying you have to place two whenever you place any of the shields. Really good for your finisher turn. Really good to help you tempo. And I just, I like him. Like, he's gonna be a one to two up tech in every deck I run, at least. Let me go to our couple comments. Uh, this was actually the first card that was revealed. Steam Engineer Shula. So I should discard it, just like, um, Great one tiger, you call her out at rest. Super cool. This actually goes with the card in the next set that I'll go over in a couple in a future video. But um it's a great one space great two space. That's all I have to say about it. Not a bad effect, but you're probably not gonna have your runner. Just like this. Uh you may run him. Uh so he gets the battle effect as well. Um, where your opponent has to guard with two cards or more when they guard with him. It's not bad. He also has a, a discard effect cost on it, which helps out with your fan force. But, I mean, if you're battle the field anyways, you don't need to battle him. him. They won't stack on top of each other. 
Uh, of course, one thing I almost forgot to mention, his effect is a bind, which you remember a bind is good for Mystery Flare. You need a mosquito. You need a burrito. This is also a bind card. This is also for Mystery Flare, and this would be really cool grade two. So, once again, talking about Shadow Paladins, they have this promo that says, um, when it intercepts a uh, rear guard attack, I think, it automatically perfect guards it. This boy's like that. Except he's a little bit better. He's got double the power, and his cost is to bind a card. But when you do that, you can block anything, not just rear guard attack. Another thing that might be just a tech one to two of, it's going to be a little more experimental, but uh, with this and the card that just got revealed the other day for Mystery Flare, I feel like this deck's going to be really defensive and the ability to be really, really aggressive. So, can't wait to tech that in Mystery. Also, there's going to be a one to two of perfect guard. Neat. And finally, we've got, well, three great ones, I guess. So I was about to say two. This one, we'll go over him first. 7k, 15k shield. They actually didn't get one for a set, so... That's cool. Good defensive card. If you guys watched my last video about witches, you know that I actually run that version in that deck. Then we got Mr. Boom Boom. Um, discard a card, choose opponent's rear guard and retire it. Neat goes again with kind of like Lynx and Fang for their whole discard retire card effect. Uh, he actually chains really well with Amazing Your Dragon and Nexet to retire a second card when it's retarded. That's Discarded. But yeah, that first kind of weird. Uh, so, yeah, like between a couple cards of this set and next set, Gear Kronk was also kind of getting a uh, discard retire kind of thing, and it retires blindly, so you could always choose. It doesn't have to be front row. Um, restrict will actually matter, of course, but uh, they can have a very nice field clearing effect if you really want to build a deck that's based around nothing but retire effects. Very easy to do that. And the final card is another member of the steampunk band, which is slowly forming into archetype, and as a former musician, I love the fact that there's going to be a music-based steampunk archetype. I will build the steampunk orchestra. I have no clue how good it's going to be, but I will build it for the memes. Anyways, on to the girl. Steam composer. Uluru. Not Uluru. Um... At the end of the battle, the boost, you can bind this, and your Vanguard gets plus 10. Super cool. Um, it's going to be great for restands, like next age, next set. But on top of that, um, not the biggest fan. I guess, like, you can put it on a rearguard column, swing that first, and then get rid of it. And, like, if your opponent defensive trigger, that instantly gets rid of the defensive trigger. So that's a nice counter. I just, it's got weird timing. And makes you attack with me guards first. So that is my, my breakdown of the set 13, extra boost of 13 for Astral Force's Gear Kronk support. Uh, let me know what, what do you guys think about that. I am super duper hyped for this. Um, basically, we have a couple new ways to play the deck. Um, everything's going to be support discard based. So it's going to be very aggressive playstyle, very akin to Royal Paladin's old brave mechanic where you just want to field everything and have very few cards in hands. But it looks like they will have some ways to recover from that by drawing extra cards during battle phase. Uh, on top of that, there's going to be a lot of new guard restrict, which kind of goes towards our, my boy Chronojet. Uh, what else? A lot of retire-based skills. We'll be looking at some field clearing that does possibly link to the discard. And some really nice new techs that I can't wait to use in everything, like the Grade 1 Perfect Guard, Grade 2 Perfect Guard, rather. Um, I keep on saying his name, what's his name? Entertainment, some entertainment. Mellow Amusements Colossus. Mac. Mac Boy, the Flying Angel of Music. <laughs> and, of course, using the new Aircob Grade 2 to get drive checks and the new Fang support. So... Shout out once again to Monster Games for giving me this clan set on time, even though the virus that shall not be named is current is still going around. We still have that pit um drive up service basically. Uh links down below if you guys wanna purchase stuff from them. They have a big online store, they sell singles, they usually do clan sets like this. 
And there's also a YouTube channel, which I'll also link below, that they've just recently started streaming for at least the Monday tur Vanguard tournaments. I don't know if they do anything for other games, but uh, sh huge shout out to them. Like I said, comments, like this video, comment below if you want to see the other analysis I got for Angel Feather, which I'll be coming soon. But anyway, this video's been going on forever. I'm going to keep clapping. I'm going to stop. Watch. That's even more kit, but it's just cool. I like it. <laughs> if you guys are new here and enjoyed the video, make sure you subscribe or comment or give a like, all that fun stuff. I do have a Patreon set up, which I will link below. I no, I barely talk about that. But uh, just so I could get more products, so I could show off more things uh, for gaming, for Skyridge games, it's also helpful to help me produce videos, get new equipment, like new computer, some a better camera than just using my iPhone here or of course travel expenses so I can actually do more stuff like coaster trips and going to conventions or big bush road events stuff like that so thank you for watching it's the last time I'm gonna say so I'll say so two more times so so until next time guys always embrace the infinite